So you can never see how big the sea is when you're taking a video of it usually. Maybe, you might be able to see it because the windows of the boat might be a reference here. Um, so the sea state is not too bad. There's a reasonable swell running, I'd say what, two and a half meters? Doesn't really look like much, but it's, um, you know, it's noticeable. It's not nice. Yeah, it's noticeable. We're just very lucky that we don't have too much wind with this sea state right at the moment. But this is why you get a catamaran. Look, we're plodding along upwind and we're all inside, nice and dry. Hello, Mum. Yes, Hello. I got splashed my head outside. Well, earlier. that's because you're outside. <laughs> So, you look out the window and you see what's going on. Then, if we go, there's outside. So we've got outside helms with, that are super exposed, that everyone says that's really shit and you can't, can't do watches at the helm. It's like, why the hell would you want to do a watch at the helm when you can do it in here? <laughs> this is much better. So I thought it would be um, an appropriate day to talk about helm positions because um, it seems to be a very hotly debated um, subject, uh, particularly by people that have never been on a catamaran. They keep telling us how the helm stations need to be on a catamaran. It's really, really annoying um, as they've got no experience. And I have to say, um, I do have actually got do have actually got that's a good English. I have actually got quite a lot of experience in um, both uh, leaning over type boats and uh, rafts like ours. Um, spent a few years, done a few miles, um, and certainly seen my fair share of really shit weather. And I've actually been fortunate enough to um, have driven a lot of boats with a, di a lot of different uh, styles of helms and positions and all the rest of it. Um, yes, a lot of them are a lot more race boat orientated, but um, a few of them are cruising boat orientated as well. Um, and we know the importance of what a helm should be and shouldn't be, particularly when you're handling your boat. So I'm going to go through and have a quick little look at um, how our boat is set up. And to be honest, our boat is actually quite well set up uh, with, its, with its helm as I'm sure lots of other people's are and, and they've come to learn to like their helms um, whether it's a single helm on uh, one side of the boat I'm talking catamarans a bit here now uh, a so single helm on one side up forward like your lagoons and your fountain pajos um, and the helm stations like our katanas um, and I'll show you our older katana um, which is actually different to the newer katanas um, the newer katanas are a lot more exposed than our older one. Um, our helm station is more akin to the older Naughty Techs and um, the newer Naughty Tech keeps the same sort of concept but went a little bit the opposite direction to what the new um, katanas did. So katana went higher and more exposed, um, Naughty Tech went lower and deeper and that created other problems. Um, also you'll be able to draw some similarities with the yacht in regards to single helm stations and, and dual helm stations. But more I want to talk about is um, not only the position but the protection. Um, apart from your coach roof style uh, pilot house uh, boats like your Amels, uh, what's Marcus's new boat? Uh, the Pegasus 50, um, where the helm stations are protected under a um, coach roof inside the cockpit. Your good old yacht, generally speaking, is extremely exposed, which is completely different in a million different ways to a multi hull. Um, so your exposure to the sea, you don't have any other options 
to do a watch on a yacht other than out on deck and you're exposed. Uh, with a molly hull, however, it's a completely different story. I'm going to show you some of the um, reasons why and how and why we do watches the way we do and where we do them and why it's um, why doing a watch on a yacht is completely different to doing a watch on a multi hull and why it's completely different how the helm sets up setups are um, yeah anyway I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out really quickly once I roll through how um, how it all works um, today is a not a sunny shiny day hence the beanie Fowleys, lace jacket, pants, but still, look, no sea boots. So, um, the only reason I don't have sea boots on is one, because I don't have them. Um, two, I got my fluffy slippers wet the uh, day before yesterday due to the dew, <laughs> not, not due to the sea. Um, I'm wearing all my Fowleys just because it's cold. Um, and I was running around up on the bow before um, checking just checking over stuff so that's the only reason I've got my Fowleys on and uh, it's what it's a nice tropical 18 degrees Celsius the, the water is exactly the same we're out here in the in the Atlantic uh, off the Portuguese coast um, not quite upwind but certainly not a comfortable angle of sail and let's have a look at what's going on so here we are in my boat <laughs> And this is where you do your watch from. The comfortable couch inside. All my instruments and stuff over here. I haven't got the Raymarine on at the moment because I'm just running the, the tablet because we're only doing a little 30 mile jaunt down the coast. But you can see out there, there's the ocean, there's the horizon. You look out the front windows. That window's all crazed and it's really shit so you can't really look out of it. But the uh, front windows, there's the horizon. And the water and everything for looking out and doing watches. Um, and again, there's the side, and then again, look out the back window, and then again, we look out the back door. So we have full visibility. I'm inside, out of the wind, out of the rain, out of all the elements. And this is where we do 99% of our watches. So it doesn't really matter if my helms are out there. See, they're out there. They're out there doing their own thing. This is how we sail most of the time with the autopilot. Now, everyone's gonna go, oh, but you haven't got good visibility and you're not outside and you're not constantly on watch. Well, we are, because we're watching Horizon. If I see something that's a little bit funky, particularly at night, I'll do this. There's, there's my step. There's my cockpit. A couple of sails on the couch. There's my instruments and my autopilot. And I go, oh, look. oh it's about that windy. And I get a whole nother look in the view. So I get, I get the sounds, the feel, and everything. You see my helm and my winches are there, ready to strip in case something uh, nasty comes through. Um, there's that really horrible main sheet system at its best, as per usual. God, I hate that main sheet system. Uh, if you haven't seen from any previous videos. There's some people that, for some reason, just feel like sitting outside in all their fowlies. They could be inside, <laughs> out of the shite, but chose to actually just sit out here for fun. No, it's not that bad at all. There's a, there's a reasonably big two meter-ish swell. Of course, you can't get any sense of scale of the size of waves through the video. Um, it's a bit better outside anyway. It's a bit queasy. Uh, a little bit queasy in there. There you go. Um, yeah, so let's go and have a look at the helm station. So if we do need to use the helms, and I used them today. I used the helms for what they were designed for. Helming. Um, we're coming out of the harbour in Lisbon and there was a yacht race <laughs> and we joined in the yacht race and um, it was fantastic because to steer my boat so we're inside a cockpit 
Now, this is actually quite a cool helm. I, I, I wasn't so sure about it to start with because it's, you know, it's down inside a tub and all the rest of it. And I wanted to walk through transom because that's all really cool and all the nice new styles and all the rest of it. Um, but what I hadn't realized is um, we actually do a shit ton of sailing. Um, and this setup is really safe. Um, you can sit down at the helm. Harry, go and sit down at the helm. There you go. Demonstration 101. He sat down at the helm, safe as houses. Um, he's not going to fall out of it. We're not going to get pooped. So you can actually see as well, oh, when we're running downwind in big stuff, um, if for some reason we had to slow down, if a wave was to come in the back, the wave would never come into the back of our cockpit and poop us like the open style ones because we were in a complete... Yeah, yeah as Anna said, so Anna and the boys spent a week delivering a Katana 471 and they didn't like the helm stations because they were a bit more exposed and let's say how would you say they were exposed they were perched this, this is sort of like a flat deck here and the seat is perched right up here which is really exposed so yeah, you don't... Yeah. 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 Exactly. If you know you're contained inside the cockpit. But why do I like this? Okay, my turn in there. I'm going to show the people what it looks like standing at our helm and what I can see. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. So, ugh. this is what I see from my bow, uh, from my helm. I got full view, obviously, of the windward hull. I got full view of my rig. That's exactly what's going on. What I don't have full view of is my leeward bow. But if I sort of look through there, hey, hello, there it is through the window. So if I'm really, really worried about what's going on the leeward bow, I just I stand here or I lean there, uh, and it's not an issue because generally. When that lured bow is going in and we're going really fast, you know, because there's like this big wall of white water that comes splashing up through here. Um, so it's, it's not an issue and we don't, it's a cruising boat, we don't push the boat that hard. Um, so it's... <laughs> no, we don't push it that hard. The fact that we know that white water comes out there is no indication that we push it that hard. Now, if I'm really worried about something, I walk to this side of the bus, and if I'm steering from this side, oh shit, look, I'm looking at the leeward bow, and I see exactly what's going on, and if we're going fast, probably getting a little bit of spray, but I can also look up at the jib, and sail to the trim of the jib, I can trim the jib, I can do everything I want down this side, and if I tack, I can do the same on the other side. Right, cool, eh? So having these outside exposed helms is not a detriment to the boat, it's definitely a um, feature. And if you are having to stand at these helms, it's for a reason. Shit's gone bad and you need to sail your boat. And if you need to sail your boat, you need to have full visibility and full control of it. Sitting uh, inside, like we do on the gunboats, is cool, but they have a dear, you know, I'll probably try and take some, oh, I have got some video off of it, um, of looking out the window. So you got full visibility, but you don't have the feeling. Um, having your helm here versus having your helm there, inside, what's the difference? That thing over your head? Absolutely no difference at all. If I'm really worried about the driving rain like I was yesterday, like there's my roof, here's my helm, I've got nothing over my head now. I stand in here, now I have roof over my head, helm in my hand, and I'm fully covered. I still can't figure out why people are so anti the helms out here versus having the helm in there. 
I've got much better control and visibility over my boat out here than I do in there. But anyway, that's just my opinion. That's uh, my thoughts on uh, it. And here I am in the real world showing you what it's all about. Um, first hand experience. Oh, look, there's the headland we need to go around. That's cool. Means we're not too far away. Um, yeah. My two cents worth, yeah. Now, as you've probably heard, there are things on my boat that I don't like. The helm station is one that I've actually started to like. There's little things like, this could be a little bit wider, you know? If it was 100 mil, ugh, sit down before they fall down. If this was 100 mil wider this way, or my helm was 100 mil further that way, this, would, this helm station would be heaps better. This main sheet is so shit. One of the things I hate the most about the boat is this main sheet system. If you're ever building a boat, don't put this main sheet system on. It is dangerous, it's rattly, it's the worst thing ever. Um, I've still got to figure out how to change mine. But yeah. Bye-bye oh, ah. Lisbon, wherever you were back there. <laughs> So we've got a little bit more speed on now and doing eights, yeah, seven and a half eights yeah, through the season eight and <laughs> going from six and a half knots to seven and a half eight knots so it's sort of like one knot, one and a half knot speed difference. You can start to see the um, difference. <laughs> Here's the rain. <laughs> Everyone coming running inside now, the rain. <laughs> this is why you do watches inside. Yeah, don't get your boots wet, Harry. Um, yeah, so a little bit more spray starting to happen, a little bit more wet. Yeah. Mmm, lovely. And of course, we get a little bit more uh, chop on top of the swell, so that tends to bust through the bows and through the front nets a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Mighty ship, plugging away. Definitely need to seal yeah, these Mom. windows. <laughs> yeah. Mum, quick, quick, Mum, 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 there's a light out here. The light that's on the uh, hard top. Alright.